So guys, today I wanted to go over a kind of more beginner kit. This is kind of prompted because I've seen quite a few knives really and overall some evolution steps in bushcrafting that have really impressed me as far as price point and overall value for what you get in that price point. I really wanted to do my take on a beginner to intermediate bushcraft kit. Now keep in mind that this kit is going to be very value based. It's not going to be the most cheap kit you can put together as far as price point goes, but this kit is rather a kit that I think adds a lot of value to the bushcrafter. Kit that I think is an extremely valuable kit for bushcrafting, and so it's not going to be extremely uh, cheap, but I'm also going to have a few options that cost less money than other options, but overall, I would consider this a definite beginner to intermediate if you're thinking about uh, bushcrafting uh, and you really want to start taking it more seriously, that would be this kind With of With that kit. being said, let's get into this kit. So first I'm going to talk about, there's so much snow now, man. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the actual knives. And knives I want to talk about first because they're probably one of the most uh, crucial parts to bushcrafting. And they're one of the things that um, really prompted me to do this video. So also you mind this pack looks a little empty because this isn't entirely set up. This is more or less set up to show you the foundations of a great beginning bushcraft kit. So the first knife, and I apologize now because I'm doing this with mittens because it's still rather cold out, uh, but the first knife is going to be the Moran Garber. And this is by far one of my favorite knives for getting into bushcrafting. Overall, I really think that though this is a kind of more pricey knife, you can still find this easily for under $100, especially with the leather sheath option. You can find this for around 80, probably even $70 if you look really hard and watch some of the winter sales. Uh, you can find this knife for reasonable prices, and I think it's just such an amazing knife to get uh, for its price point. I think it is an absolute win in many different ways, and uh, overall this would make a stellar addition to your belt knife for bushcrafting. I also love this sheath, by the way, for... Uh, big mittens like this, you'll know uh, with this leather sheath in particular, it's very easy to use with mittens. So if you are in a more northern climate like Alaska, I would highly encourage this leather sheath option because the leather sheath, while it doesn't look as cool as the multi mount, it is a lot more practical. So anyway, the next one is the Mora Eldress. And I think this would make a great beginner's neck knife just for the fact that it is so tiny. This one is the green one. I also have a red one running around here. If you guys watch other videos, you've seen that one. But uh, this is the green one, and I am very impressed with this knife, especially as a companion to a larger knife. I think this would be a very great knife to have once you start to get more into crafting notches and dressing game animals. I think this would be a very great addition to add to the Garber. Because the one problem with the Garberg, I don't think it's the most uh, easy to use knife when it comes to dressing game animals or doing very fine tasks. And I think that's where the Eldris really excels. So I think if you want to pair a knife uh, with the Eldris or the other knife I'm about to show, this makes a great companion knife. And I, what really blows me away with this knife is its price point. It's around $25. Uh, a little bit more if you go for the fire steel neck knife version but if you just go for the straight version and you put paracord on it yourself uh, which i do not think would be a problem you can get a really great companion neck knife and neck knives especially with full handles like this are extremely hard to find for under 40 dollars i mean things like the se zula are 40 plus dollars and that's without handles so you're getting a knife that's just the tang you still have to wrap that or put handles on it yourself 
So overall, I really think this is a great value knife for being a companion, especially considering that oftentimes companion knives are not very cheap for what you're getting. Like being such tiny knives, you have to pay a lot of money. So the last knife that I recommend for more of a beginner or something that I think adds a lot of value is the straight SHF 42D. This kind of is on the larger side. It's larger than both of the other knives, of course, larger than the Eldris, but larger than the uh, uh, Garber, and I think if you wanted a knife that's around the 10 inch, just shy of 10 inch range, or you felt like you needed a knife that is of more substantial size than the Garber, I would really encourage you to take a look at the Schrade SHF 42D. It's made out of 1095 high carbon steel. It is extremely comfortable knife to hold. Overall, I really liked it. I'd say the one thing I dislike about this knife for beginners is the fact that it is full flat grind. I really dislike that grind as far as if you're a beginning bushcrafter. It's not even close to as good as a Scandi grind that was on the other two knives. So ultimately I would try and find a Garberg, but if you really do need that slightly larger knife uh, that's approaching the 10 inch range, or if that's what you really want, I would definitely encourage you to check out the Schrade SHF 42D. And I would make sure it's the D. I really dislike just the 42, uh, straight SHF 42, because it has such a large recurve. Recurves don't really make a lot of sense for bushcrafting, especially when you consider that the area where the recurve is on the knife is where you're going to be doing a lot of uh, fine tasks. You really don't want that recurve. So if you do want to check that out or need that larger knife, I would encourage you to check out that option. So that's it for knives. The next piece I'm going to go over is saws, and though I have this one just as a placeholder, ultimately, I mean this might be a good option. The big boy is around 50 The cheapest I found it on Amazon was like $49, so it's a little spendy, uh, and I think it might be just a tad large, especially if you're running the pack that I recommend. Uh, it's going to be a little bit large with something like the Baco Laplander or even smaller silkies like the F-180, I believe it is. I'll annotate its name, are uh, a bit smaller. They're more like this size, uh, and so they fit a lot better in a pack like this. Uh, and overall, they allow you to do a lot of good work still, even though they're smaller than this. If you wanted to, I still think that the big boy does have a lot of value to it, but really carrying a folding saw something that I really didn't believe in for a long time. I actually now really do believe in and highly recommend that you would check out. So pretty much the Bonko Laplander or the Silky F180 are my two recommendations for saws. Um, now on to other things. I'm going to get into axes last because they're not on the path, but as far as water bottles go, this one is a Nalgene, and I think it's really hard to mess up with just a normal plastic Nalgene. I wouldn't necessarily encourage a stainless steel bottle, but what I would recommend is get a plastic Nalgene like this. You can get them for like eight bucks, and then get something like a GSI Glacier stainless steel cup. So you still have the ability to boil water, but you also have a reasonably affordable package uh, and I do understand you have to carry the GSI instead of having just a stainless steel bottle which kind of sucks but it is in my opinion a little bit more affordable and a little bit more versatile uh, and also if you guys want to know how to mod your now jeans to have a paracord piece I'll link uh, the video probably right around here where I showed how to make this paracord uh, was this like capture this paracord piece here uh, so definitely check that out uh, now on to fire steels there are a few recommendations for me really you'll have to find one that you really like and produces uh, the right amount of uh, fire or sparks for you personally i like the nano striker xl though i do realize that's above the price point of most people and really it's not a very affordable or very valuable ferro rod. I just like the Nano Striker XL uh, because of what it is. 
but some more valuable ones would be something like the UST Blast Match, which is shown here. I really like how thick the ferro rod is, and the fact that it is a one-handed striking ferro rod is also very neat and pretty cool. I also find that it does produce a lot of very hot sparks. So the next one, and I know this is unintentionally on one of my SATs, I just threw it on here because I wanted some lanyard for it, uh, but overall, uh, this is the Light My Fire. This one isn't a Coca Bolo, but this is the Light My Fire 2.0 Army Striker, and this is probably one of my most valuable ferro rods, or adds the most value. You can get these for around $20, and they are just a gigantic, I think this is like a half, maybe it's three quarter inch. Uh, chunk of ferro rod. Of course, you can get larger things out there. You can get obnoxiously large ones nowadays, but this one, as far as value goes, is around $20. You get 12,000 strikes off of it, and you can get them in a lot of different uh, handle options. As I said, this is the coconut shell handle one, uh, or cocoa shell one. This one tends to be a little bit more pricey of a handle option. I just like the way the coconut shell looks. But those are my two probably most valuable ferro rods, if I could recommend a ferro rod of value. As far as other fire starting options, that would be of value or add a lot of value. I can't really recommend anything outside of ferro rods because, in my opinion, things like fire pistons and lighters are um, quite pricey, really. I mean, Zippos are pretty good but you, there is a lot of upkeep with them. You have to make sure that whenever you're planning to go out and use them, that you charge them up with uh, lighter fluid. You have to make sure their wicks and their flints are good. And all those things, the lighter fluid, the flints, the wicks, all that stuff does wear out and you have to replace it. So, I mean, you do eventually have to replace these ferro rods, but there's no having to refill this ferro rod. Uh, overall, I think ferro rods, if you're looking for a fire starter uh, for, that has high value, are probably the best things to go with. So that pretty much completes the pack. As far as the pack goes, what I would recommend for value is the Maxpedition Jumbo Versa pack. This is one that I really like. And honestly, I would still be running this more often if I didn't have to carry in uh, all this camera equipment that I now carry into the woods. Uh, I think this is overall very affordably priced and the convenience of it, what I really like is that at any point you can just sling this in front of you and you have access to anything in here. So if you just want to grab a quick drink of water, you have it right there. If you want to grab the saw, you have it there. This even allows you to carry something like your knife off body and in a pack like this so that you could have it just in the main compartment, reach in, grab it, use it, throw this thing back behind you, and you never even have to take the pack off. That is something that I've always really loved about the Versa packs, but this one in particular, I really do love the most. So now on to axes. I'm gonna start off with the one that's probably the most expensive, and once again, you're gonna to have to make your own call on this. Something that I would encourage a lot of you to do is, you know, over things like Christmas and birthdays, encourage family members to get you some of these other things, and maybe that will allow you to save up your own money to go for something like a more expensive axe like this. And if that's absolutely not possible, then, you know, I do have a more valued option here. But getting into this one, this is the Wetterling Swedish Forest Axe. I really pull this one out more to reference something like the Husqvarna axe and the Husqvarna is around $60. It's around the same size as this one uh, or the one I'm referencing uh, which I'll, I cannot remember its name. I'll just annotate it up there uh, and probably link it in Amazon but you know it's around $60 and it's Swedish made. Very hard to beat it. Overall I would recommend really investing a lot of money into a good axe, a good knife, a good path and like a good saw because those are some of the things that you will be using the most and if you have inadequate gear in those primary areas, you're really going to be feeling it, you know. Uh, if you have an axe that does not cut fast, that's really going to hinder you in getting work done. Uh, same with knives, 
and if you have a pack that's falling apart, that's really going to hinder you getting your gear in and out of field. So, you know, invest money into those things and do even more research, what I would recommend. But overall, the Husqvarna, if you can find a Wetterlings, they're generally more affordable than a GBA. I personally like GBAs more, and if you can spring and go all the way for the GBA, uh, that would be the best in my opinion, but if you can't spring for the GBA, I would recommend a Husqvarna or a Wetterlings like this, if you can find Wetterlings, they're pretty hard to find nowadays, but um, definitely the Husqvarna, maybe a Holtzbrux, I have no experience on them, I may be getting one in the near future, I'm not really sure, uh, but I might get one eventually, but overall, I'd probably still recommend a Holtzbrux, they seem pretty good, but definitely Husqvarna or a Wetterlings. Uh, would be my top recommendations for a more value oriented uh, axe but if you can't spring for that i would recommend something like this sorry this one's so snow covered uh, it's like icy snow covered <laughs> but anyways um this is the cold steel trail boss it's not a particularly well-known axe in the bushcraft industry um, and I still think it has pretty good value for its price point. I mean, it's like $24. Actually, the last time I saw it on uh, Amazon, it was like $23. It's extremely hard to beat for its price point. Uh, there is a lot of work you have to do. You would have to make your own sheath for it. You would have to sharpen it. But if those are things that you are willing to do, you may have to also rehang it. Uh, some of the handles are not as good as others. But... If those are three things that you are willing to do, this might be the axe to go for. I will say something I really do like about it is that it does have a very broad face or very broad edge on it over something like the Wetterlings. Uh, something else I do like is that it is very wedged, so this is a lot better for splitting than even the GBA or Wetterlings or Husqvarna. So it does have some advantages over those other axes, but... Uh, I would still encourage these. These are a lot more fun to use, and for the most part, you're not really going to be splitting things. You're going to hopefully be like cutting down trees uh, and stuff like that, or cutting up trees, I should say. Uh, so that is an overall look at the gear that I recommend for beginner to intermediate bushcrafter. Once again, this is a very value-oriented uh, kit. This is not just about you know buying the cheapest possible gear. It's about buying gear that provides you a lot of bang for your buck and will continue to serve you as you grow. particular will add a lot of value and really help be with you as you continue to grow in a bushcrafting uh, setup. That's why I recommend it even into intermediate, maybe even advanced. I mean, this gear is just so good that as you grow in your skills, it will continue to be there and allow you to you know, practice more advanced procedures and more advanced techniques. Anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that look at this kit. And don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe. And if you guys have any more value oriented gear, don't forget to uh, comment that below and let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this kit. And I'm out.